Do you remember um, why he got involved? Well, I think it was Mum, slightly, who said she never used to get that much involved in what Dad did either way. She was like, very much it's his decision, but when she heard about your project, she said, I would really like it if you did this. We could have saved ourselves, but we didn't. It's amazing. What state of mind were we in to face extinction? and simply shrug it off. I think he didn't know quite how much he was going to be a part of it. Because <laughs> he turned up thinking it was a voiceover. Did you hear about this? I did hear about that, yeah. Right. That's because somebody uh, on our team had worked with him once before. Uh -huh. And so he, the guy on our team, called Pete's agent or something, I don't know exactly who, and explained it as the narrator of the film. Right, yeah, yeah, using yeah. Using those words. Yeah. Um, and between the two of them managed... To Somehow, <laughs> yeah, somehow wires crossed. Yeah, wires thing. crossed, yeah, yeah. Actor Pete Postlethwaite was one of those won over by the filmmaker's enthusiasm. And I turned up and Franny, the director, Franny Armstrong, said that we haven't got much money but we've got a little caravan for you to change into and get made up. So I said, hang on, it's a voiceover, you don't need all that. Problem. He said, no, it's not, you're on camera. But he said as soon as he met you and as soon right. as he met um, the team that he yeah. just thought it was so important to be doing and the budget didn't matter or anything <laughs> like that. That never sort of mattered to yeah, him. Yeah. Um, as long as we had the cans of Guinness. As long as we had the cans of Guinness. He wasn't so worried about the budget. Nah, <laughs> but nah. we did have to have Guinness, I remember that. I think he was worried as well because you wanted him working computers. That's true. He had to work this like futuristic computer and yeah. everybody had to go at it beforehand, like young people, and everybody was like, that is really hard to do. <laughs> like, because it didn't exist. Yeah, and you had to say And then Pete there. did it. Perfect. Straight away, he's yeah. like, he never, he can't even, he said he can't even use a computer. He was just like, <laughs> but he was the only one who could do it. He could, well. There you go. Okay, standing by, please. Turn over. Speed. Okay. 19, take two. It was one of the most exciting moments of my life Three, was when it all came together and he was sitting there, I was looking at the monitor, saying our words in the set that we'd built in this, you know, documentary we've been making for our whole lives, it seemed. But suddenly he was saying it and it was all coming alive, honestly. I was like, the only feeling I had comparable is doing a bungee jump hey. <laughs> in terms of adrenaline. The question I've been asking is, why didn't we save ourselves when we had the chance? Is the answer because on some level, we weren't sure if we were worth saving? But it's a really brilliant like touch to the film yeah, yeah. to just have someone, especially with his scraggly face, that. do you know what I mean? Yeah, Coming yeah, out yeah. there going, yeah. the last man on earth yeah. sort of going, yeah, we fucked it up. <laughs> My only regret, not regret, is I did think at the time it should be a woman. Yes. And I still think that now, like, it should yeah. have been a woman. But then I thought, even then, I thought it should be a woman. No, it's got to be Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and even um, now, I think, oh, should it have been a woman? No, it's good, it had to be Pete, so. What yeah, I mean, do? sort of Judy Dench or something. Yeah, yeah, doing exactly. It, do you know what I mean? Or exactly. something like that. Why didn't we save ourselves when we had the chance? The Age of Stupid is fronted by an Oscar-nominated British actor. His casting came after the filmmakers Googled him and found that he had green credentials. She did Google, yeah, she did. She found that we'd applied for planning permission to get a wind turbine. The article that came up was from your local paper, yeah. and it said that your um, mum and dad were having this battle with the local council about planning for the wind turbine at your house. Well, they, yeah, I mean... And that's what I read, was, and I was yeah. like... Oh, well, he then, might say yes, he's he into climate change, he might say yes. Pete signed up to do our 10, 10 campaign that came out of Age of Stupid. Yep. And do you know what percentage your parents well, managed to cut down? I was looking at the down. percentages yeah. and I talked to mum about the percentages yeah, yeah. and she said, well, I'm not, I wouldn't be too sure about yeah. percentages, whether how much we've done. But we've at least 10%. At least well, 10%. if you did all of those things, wind turbine, oh, no, at least 10%. well over 10%. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I think they said something like 87 or something. Oh, did they? I think mum was a bit like, nah, I'm not sure exactly <laughs> yeah, about those extreme, sort yeah, of yeah. things. How important do you think the film was to your dad? Because, like, as you say, when he turned up for filming, he was like, he thought he was doing a voiceover. But then it wasn't just that, the whole thing snowballed in terms of how much he did oh. afterwards as well. Yeah, well, I think you could tell that it is the biggest thing facing yep. <laughs> not just the human race. Yeah, yeah. The Every species, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And Dad was always one that if he felt that there was something he wanted to put his name and scraggly face to, he would do it. Really special. And at the same time that you're doing this, there's a new film of yours coming out with an environmental 
Ah, The Age of Stupid. Yes. Yeah, The Age of Stupid. It's an extraordinary documentary uh, by Franny Arthur. It's about the impact of climate change. It's about climate change. Yeah, it's set in the future, looking yeah. back, and it's a, a guy who's saying, why did what's happened? Why didn't we wake up? Meeting you guys in the film and how the film turned out so yeah. brilliantly, he was like, absolutely. And I remember him being very excited about the premiere yeah. and the fact that the premiere was going to only use 1% of the energy that it usually costs for a premiere. That's right. Because movie making is ridiculous yeah, in yeah. terms of environmentally. It's, uh, it can be atrociously amount of resources used to get 30 seconds of yeah, shot. Yeah. Now I know the cinema here in Leicester Square is being powered by solar energy, taking yeah. I think it's 1% of the normal energy for a movie premiere, but once it goes on general release it's going to be in conventional cinemas. Hopefully. Doesn't that mean Greek conventionals are pretty, pretty patchy? Um, you know, so sort of some people's ideas about capitalism as well, they're pretty patchy too. I think trying to pick holes in what we're trying to do in terms of green credentials is a nonsense. Are you there? I was there. You were there, so you were about 17 or something, were you? Yeah, I think so. Do so do you remember what happened with Ed Miliband and your dad standing up and the... I do, I remember being really embarrassed actually in some ways because I was like, oh God, here we go. Because dad could, when he goes for people, he goes for people, do you know what I mean? If you commission a new dirty coal power station at King's North, then you are clearly unfit to represent the people of Britain at the Copenhagen Climate Summit. And therefore, I promise to... My first thing would be to very sadly return to Her Majesty the Queen the OBE that I was given in 2002, because I don't believe that I can be a, a real officer of the British Empire if that is what's going to happen. So that would be mine there. And then Ed Meliband, I suppose, at that point, maybe did need that sort of attack. But then he did well, Ed, I thought. I think he did very, very well. And bless him, when Dad died, he did send a really lovely letter and everything like that. I think Ed Meliband's got a lot of integrity in many ways. And, um, and I think that's, Dad saw that, so I knew he could go for him. Unfortunately, I would never be able to vote for the Labour Party again. Well, Dad also, I think, felt so much anger at New Labour as well. I yeah. think it felt so let down by New Labour. And, um, and there's part of me that's glad he's not around today because he would be f yeah. very furious with what's going on, I think, in our political and our government at the moment. I think he would, um, yeah, he would have some stern words. But I think he would be super excited about what the youth are doing yeah, and getting yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and striking, I think he would be right there with him. Because I don't believe that I can be a, a real officer of the British Empire if that is what's going to happen. You were there, weren't you, I think, when your dad got his OBE, weren't you? I was there, yeah, went to the palace. But um, that was 100% his idea to give back the OBE. Was it? Well, we suggested, oh, you know, Pete, would you be up for doing this thing at the premiere? Because Ed Miliband's invited himself along, you know, we could do this stunt, would you, would you lead it? And uh, he said, I said, would you do this stunt? And he went, I will do that. And I'll also threaten to give back my OB. <laughs> I was like, yes, that is so good. And of course, that's what got all the press and everything like that. So I checked with my friend in, who knows about these things this morning, and apparently it's still, it's still the case, it's still, yeah. what your dad did. Yeah, it's, it's still, still policy. In, but what Ed Miliband did was change coal policy in relation to carbon capture and storage. Yeah. What are you doing now? Uh, I'm just about to. Actually, I can't say it in here. Oh, yeah. The Scottish play. <laughs> what are you playing in the Scottish play? I'm playing him. Wow. Mackers, who Dad played at wow. 51. Wow. So, I mean, I'm far too young in many ways, but I'm enjoying the challenge of it. How oh, now, you secret black and midnight hag? Speak. Yeah, the, the only reason, in many ways, I'm doing it is because of Dad. I was offered by Paul Hart, the artistic director here, to come and play Maccas, and uh, I said I need the weekend to think about it. And I looked up, a, a, there was a Guardian interview with Dad, which was titled, The Day I Shared a Pint or Five with Pete Postlethwaite. <laughs> And uh, it's we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> Dad said, like, this play, like, 
sends you bonkers. And, uh, and he's right, yeah. he is right. Yeah. Feels like these things are, are repeating. There's a weird repetition on things. Did you see your dad in his version I did, of this? apparently I fell asleep during <laughs> it, which I feel silly about now. Yeah. Um, but I've actually was sent a VHS copy of oh. Dad's one and watched it. Yeah. Um, Any and, good? Uh, yeah, really good. <laughs> yeah, really good. What um, did he think of you following in his footsteps? He was never pushy, but was always there to help me. And I was slightly trying to be on my own course going, I'm going to do things my way, do you yeah. know what I mean? And then when I left drama school and he'd passed away, I felt like I had a million questions every day to ask him. And I still do have a... Um, but I feel like he sort of guides in not, I mean, not in too spiritual way, but yeah. in different ways throughout different things, like yeah, reading yeah. that interview, like talking to you, yeah, yeah. like having the 10 year anniversary of this. Yeah. It's like, no, there's something that lives on. There is, um, you live there on. Is, oh, <laughs> um, he lives in you. What is that? <laughs> Lion King. I think to pack that much information, detail, and fact into a film that is exciting, moving, keeps you engaged all the way through, is phenomenal. It's an extraordinary achievement. Americans have been advertised at longest, and they now each consume twice as much energy as the Europeans. I mean, I rewatched the film the other couple of weeks ago for the first time in about five years, and I was actually shocked, A, at how much it stood up, um, but also, um, Everything we were saying is bad is way worse. And everything that we are saying was the solutions is screaming out to still be the solutions, you know? Absolutely. I think it still stands up brilliantly yeah. today. Yeah. Um, it's also extremely terrifying. It I think is. the one thing that really sticks with me is if we continue going the way that we're going, we would need nine <laughs> planets. Nine. Nine I think Earths. Five or six. Oh, really? Have I got? Have I, no, I swear it's nine. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe. Uh, but no, we'll I, uh, five or six. We'll check it. But either way, vast one. more than one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If everyone consumed like Americans, Australians, and Canadians, we'd need another four. And in 2040 or so, when there's about nine billion of us, we'll need two more again. And we will look back. Yeah. Well, if we're here to look back. Well, no. Yeah. I no. mean, if there's any. If there's anything to look back on. Any human life. That's a cheery note. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout our history, the deal was we left the world in a better place than we found it. That was progress. The wheel, the rule of law, penicillin. It was our covenant to our children and grandchildren. I've had two little ones since we made the film. Have you? Yeah, they're five and six now. And um, it puts the whole thing in perspective. I mean, obviously, I spent all my time making the film because of because of all the obvious reasons. Mm. But then uh, now I've got two little people who are, who are going to be mm. in there facing the impacts. And yeah. my daughter wrote me a story for my birthday the other day. <laughs> She's only six. And in this story, it said, um, and then mummy goes swimming in a warm rim river, because I like swimming in the river, brackets, uh. but it wasn't warm because of climate change. <laughs> 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 she was trying not to spoil Sorry. my birthday story <laughs> by harping on about climate change, but she felt she had to put that in. So what about you? You haven't got your own kids, have you? I haven't got any kids. Are you hoping to have some? The idea of not being able to have them is, is very upsetting. But w w I don't know whether I would want to bring them into this world at the moment. The, the way that things are going, there's a real, there's a reckoning coming. And uh, the idea that I've got two, three little ones to look after when that reckoning happens scares the hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs>